Hi, my name is Pastor Larry, and I'm the lead pastor here at Life Community Church. Our mission here is that we help people know Jesus personally and to serve him passionately. And we're so glad that you're joining us today online. Now, if you're new here, we would love for you to fill out a connection card so that we can stay connected, so that you know what's going on here at Life Community Church, and that you would also subscribe so that you're informed of any new content that's happening or going on. But let's get ready for the message. Today, today, I, I want to go. I want us to go to Revelation, Revelation chapter twenty-one, if you can. Revelation chapter twenty-one. Uh, we're going to read verses one through seven, um, and um, just just so that just so that we enter the new year uh, right. I'm going to have you guys please stand. Let's stand as we read God's word um, together. Because I want us to remember. I want you to remember that this this idea of, of a heavenly high five. Amen. So Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 through 7, the word of God declares this. He says, then I saw a new heaven. Someone say new heaven. And a new earth. Say new earth. earth. Why? For the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. And the sea has also gone. Verse 2, and I saw the holy city, the new. Someone say new Jerusalem. The new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I remember my beautiful bride on December 7th. Oh, Uh, let's keep on reading. Verse 3, I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home is now among his people. Hallelujah. We will live with them. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe, I love this, he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. Someone should be good with that right there. All these things are gone forever. Verse 5, and the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything. Someone say everything. I am making everything new. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. Who here knows that we serve a trustworthy and a true God? And he also said, listen, (laughs) who remembers this word? It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I will give freely from the springs of the water of life. Verse 7. All who are victorious will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and this is his promise to us, and they will be my children. And for our topic, we were looking at verse 5, and the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything. Someone say everything. I am making everything new. Before you sit down, once again. Five holy high fives and says God is making it new. Come on, says God is making it new. You are not making it new. God is making it new. This one for Dan. Oh, come on, Dan. This is for you. He's the only one that can get it that high. Come on, Dan. Oh, oh, there we go. You guys can be seated. Amen. In the presence of God. Listen, as we prepare for a new year, many of us have plans for a new start in our lives. We, we, we make what's called New Year resolutions. And when we say, God, we're going to lose weight. Huh. <laughs> don't, don't, don't challenge me, because I said, I said that last year. Didn't I say, Sister Christine? I said I was going to do that. Okay. So, some of us say that we're going to change our attitude. I'm going to be different at work until my boss get on my nerves again. <laughs> that, that we want a, a fresh start in our lives. And it's only natural for most of us to look For new things, because many things in this world, many people in this world in particular are fascinated by the new. I mean, think about it. Every year, they come out with a new cell phone with a different case. (laughs) Titanium. iPhone come out with titanium. I'm sorry, Android had titanium five years ago. It's not new. (laughs) 
We're looking for that new home. We want that new house. You know, like we, we buy a house, and, and, and if someone else lived in it, that's fine. But, but who here knows about walking in a brand new home that no one else has lived in? No one, we love that. We, we love this new car. I mean, we love new cars so much, Pastor Davson. There is actually a, like a, a plant in your car, a spray that you can spray in your car called new car smell. Some of us, we're, we're looking for a new change, a change in our routine. Uh, many of us, we like vacations. Some of us like vacations because usually our vacation is like, I want to try this place. I want to go here. I want to do something different. But then there's the people like my, my father and my mother who just, they love Brandywine. They love Collegeville. So every year, we went to the same place. <laughs> Myrtle Beach. Again, Dad. <laughs> but, but there's people out there that like that newness. And having those new experiences. And, and, and watch this. And while we do know that, that, that King Solomon said in Ecclesiastes 1.9 that there's nothing new under the sun, we also know in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things. Someone say all things. All things, all things have become new. new. But there's a problem with that. There's a problem. Because when we're looking at new on a world type end, no matter how new something is, it will eventually become old. I, I love the fact that I've, in my life I've, 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 only, I've only purchased two new new cars, I can say, where no one has ever driven them before. But if I go to a car lot and I buy a used car, it's still new because it's new to me. But the idea that everything that we're looking for, this new that we're looking for, it does eventually become old when we're looking at it from an outside or external way. The outside, the external, that's, that's temporary. That, that's, that's here today and gone Tomorrow. Now, now the new, the new that I want us to latch on today is a new that's, a, that's an internal new. It's an inside new, a new that lasts forever. And this type of newness I want us to be challenged with because this is the newness that lasts forever. This is a newness that, 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 that begins on the inside and, and brings on what I like to call spiritual conviction in our lives. You, you, you guys know what spiritual conviction is. Well, if you don't, I'm going to tell you anyway. Well, let, let, let's look at what spiritual conviction is not. First of all, spiritual conviction is not, it is not simply a guilty conscience or even shame over sin because these feelings are natural and be, can be experienced by almost everyone. So just because you have a guilty conscience doesn't mean that you have a spiritual conviction inside of you. Secondly, spiritual conviction is not just a sense of unease or a fear of divine punishment because, of, because these feelings are also experienced in many of the hearts of sinners. It's the fact that, that you got caught and now you'll be punished and that now you have that conviction of, oh, I shouldn't have done that or I shouldn't have said that. And thirdly, spiritual conviction is not merely the knowledge of right and wrong. Or an agreement to scripture's teachings about sin. Because you read the Bible and you understand that, that, that killing someone is wrong and that, that I may feel bad about it doesn't mean that there's a true spiritual conviction inside of you, a true inner newness that, that I want us to latch on to. It's the idea that, that that word conviction comes from the word convict, which actually is a Greek word that, that, that actually means to convince someone of the truth. It means to reprove, to re accuse, to refute, or to cross-examine a witness. Where's Brian? He knows about cross-examining, and he's a lawyer. I, I, I'm, you guys know I'm a retired PA state police officer, so I, I've been a witness on certain cases before. So this idea of convicting is, is actually being cross-examined by someone so that you convince them what's the truth. 
It's the Holy Spirit's job. It's just, it's just the very presence of God in our lives that acts as this prosecuting attorney to expose the evil, to reprove evil doers and convince people that they need Christ as their Savior. That's what spiritual conviction really is. It's not about feeling bad. I, I can feel bad about kicking my dog. <laughs> I, I can feel bad about, uh, about Dallas winning last night and Detroit not just kicking the field goal and going into overtime. But what is the spiritual conviction, the newness that I want us to see today? What is the spiritual conviction that, that brings a sustained newness? that occurs from the inside out, as opposed to a worldly conviction that begins on the outside in. But, but I, I want to preface it by saying this. Many times in our lives, we, we have a desire. We say, God, I, I, I want to be new. I, I want to be changed. I, I want to do things differently, and, and I feel that. But sometimes, even though this newness that I want us to latch on to is an inside-out type of thing, it may have to start from the outside in. What does that mean, Pastor Larry? Well, there, you, you may have to start by changing the people that you surround yourself with to allow that inner conviction to catch up with the outer commitment that you made. You, you, you may have to do some things differently. I used to drive down this road, and I know exactly where to pull over to get my cigarettes and my six-pack of beer. I'm not sending anybody to hell for these things. But you know, you know what these things do to you. You may have to take a different route because you know that you're going to go down that street and, and stop at that house that's not your wife or your husband's house. You may have to change some routines and outward change until that inner man is strong enough to get to the point of the newness that I want us to be committed to. But today, today, I want to encourage us today to look for or to give you what's called my heavenly high five. Five things that I want us to strive for as a church in 2024. Amen? Five things. Now, there's a lot of other things. You can put more things on your list if you want to. But Pastor Larry, I just want to give you five. So, so, so as the year, <coughs> excuse me, as the year goes on, I, I want you to encourage someone. You see somebody droping with their head down you can say, oh, oh, lift your head. Come on, give me five. And I want you to give them five. To remind them of the high five we're going to look at and talk about today. I want you to maybe encourage someone to say, you don't have to be down. We're, we're pressing towards the mark. Give me five. And it's something that I want us to do together. Amen? I want us to do, and, and listen, let me say this right now as well. Um, before I forget, next week, next Sunday, is our Vision Sunday. That's, that's the Sunday where I want to give you exactly the vision that God gave me, our theme for 2024. And, I want, I, I, and, and I'm asking for you guys. I, I'm, I'm not asking you to fast. I'm not asking for anything. But I'm asking for, for those here and then maybe watching online, that for these seven days, if you would, with me, turn something down. Turn something off. Just for this week. It may be the television. It may be... It, it, it may be uh, Starbucks in the morning. It, 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 it may be something that, it may be sugar, it may be caffeine, something. I'm asking for, for at, I want at least, at, at least five of you today to commit with me. To say that, Pastor Larry, for this one week, I'm going to turn this one thing down. Why? Because I want next week to be a week where that ground is really fertile. And, and, and that we're really ready to hear what God wants us to do in 2024, where God is moving right here at Life Community Church. And, and to see that by doing this, how is God going to help you as you strive towards this heavenly high five? And the first thing, the first part, the first five of the, first part of the five that I want us to strive for, to, to press towards, is that I want in you in 2024 to have a new song. A new song. Psalm 96, verse 1, it says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. That, that, used, that used to be a, we used to sing that back in Philadelphia. Sing unto the Lord a new song. I, I want you to find a new song to sing 
in 2024. I want you to have a new song on your lips, a song that's filled with God's love, his goodness, his joy, his mercy, and his grace. Many of us have been singing the same old song, been on repeat. Nobody knows the trouble I see. We're singing the same old, I want you to latch on to something good. It may be the fact that God woke me up this morning. Huh, 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 uh. God woke me up this morning. Huh, huh, huh. It may be that I got the best wife. Huh, huh, huh. Uh. I got the best husband. Huh, huh, huh. Find something and sing a new song. Something that keeps you out of this feeling that, that, you're, that, that I'm so sad, I, I, I'm miserable, I'm so downtrodden. Because what? Because what you sing is what you are. There's something, there's something special about a song. Why do you think Satan uses music to pull us in? There's certain songs that will take you right back to that moment. There's certain, once you hear them, like, oh, yeah, I remember, 1989, Greek Picnic. Oh, Lord, have me. Hear that song, but, oh, my goodness. Takes you right back to the Brazil and Pastor Daphson dancing down the streets <laughs> in Brazil. <laughs> I want you to have a song that reminds you about the goodness of God. A song that reminds you about how faithful he's been in your life. A song that shows to others that no matter what you're going through, I'm going to trust him and not me. I, I want us to sing a new song in 2000. So I'd be committed to singing in Revelation chapter 5, verse 8 through 9. This is when he took the scroll. Listen, the four living beings and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb each of them with a harp, and they held bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. And verse 9 says, and they sang a new song. I want you to find that new song. I want you to sing it. If music is not your ministry, sing it to yourself. Sing it in the shower. You guys remember the Flintstones? Barney Rubble could not sing outside of the shower. But the moment that Barney Rubble went into the shower, if you've never seen it, just go to YouTube and Google, Barney Rubble sings in the shower. That brother had a voice. If you're by yourself, guess what? When you're by yourself and you're singing, you sound better than Luther Vandross. <laughs> you just may not be invited to the worship team. Amen. We want you to worship there. Amen. But I want you to find that new song and sing it to remind yourself about how good God is. And guess what? It also reminds others of whose you are and how good God is and has been. So that's the first. I want you to find a new song. The second part of your high five is not only I want you to find a new song, but I want you to, to latch on to your new heart. Ezekiel 36, 26, the A portion says, he says, I will give you a new heart. Now think about this. This is an amazing gift, a, a new, new heart, which is something that only God can give. Now, now the, in the world, we have what's called a, tran a transplant list, where if you need something, a liver or lungs or a heart, you go on this list and you have to wait on this list until something happens or someone donates these organs to you. And you get them, they're new to you, but like I said earlier, they're actually old new. God gives you a new, new. And it's something that you can receive that doesn't cost you anything. I want you to latch onto a new heart. Say, God, I want you to create in me a clean heart. I want you, God, God there's, there's no waiting list. You can go right, it says that you can go boldly to the throne of God and ask in faith, and you will receive it. And, and this new heart, what does this new heart do? This new heart actually changes how you see things. In, in, in that same chapter of Ezekiel, chapter 36, 
verse 26, the C portion. It says, I will take out your stony, stubborn heart. Who here knows that we have stony and stubborn hearts? We want it, like Bergen says, I want it my way. I want church to start at 11. I don't want to wake up at 9. I want it. Maui, I'm stubborn, God. I don't want to leave this job because this job, God, do you know how good the benefits are? I don't want to leave this job, but God, I know you're telling me to go and do this, but, but I'm stubborn. How dare you tell me to go forgive this person that hurt me or one, somebody in my family? A stony heart. But he says, I will give you a tender or responsive heart. God actually takes out this old heart of stone, the heart that's stained with sin, sin, a hard heart that's closed to the very heart of Christ. Like I said, stubborn. Stubborn. And he changes that heart. And he says that he gives you this new heart, a heart of flesh, a heart that's tender, a soft heart that's submitted to God, and his will for us. It's a heart that's responsive to God. It's a heart that's, that's, that's open, ready to receive. To say, God, I don't understand it. But at your word, I will do it. Just say the word, God. I will go. Send me, Lord. I will go. I don't understand it. If you if you want if you want to if you want to hear a little bit about this, talk to me and Jessica about our journey from Philadelphia to here. We did not understand it. It didn't make any sense. Good job. Good benefits. We barbecued every weekend. <laughs> Good house, twin home, three story fireplace. Oh my goodness, I love that home. I love the fact that when I invited Jessica there, I was a bachelor. She walked in. I was like, I got, you want to turn the fireplace on for you, baby? <laughs> She's, hee, 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 hee. <laughs> Gave all that up. Left it. To come to a crazy area called Southern Chester County and smell mushrooms <laughs> every day. Financially strained, in debt. But I knew God told me to go. I knew he did, Pastor Dab said. Renting a house that cost more than what my mortgage was. Getting paid the exact amount that my mortgage was. It wasn't no extra at the end of the month. I don't know if you ever had more month than money. <laughs> I could talk to you a little bit about that. But a responsive heart says, God, I will go. I don't understand it, but I will go. And guess what? If we hadn't have gone seven years ago, I wouldn't be here today. Because God began working. He said, okay, I see you. I see you being faithful. I see you working. I see your heart being responsive. I'm going to tell you, do this. Oh, yes, he's been responsive before. And that heart, that change of heart begins to change your direction, your, 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 your direction in life. And you, you're not, you, God, you're not going to see it. And I thank God because if you, many of us, if we, if we knew the end at the beginning, we wouldn't even start the journey. Because it wouldn't make any sense. But that new heart is responsive. So I want you to have a new song, but I also want you to say, God, give me a new heart. Thirdly, not just a new song, not just a new heart, but I want you to have a new spirit. In that same verse of Ezekiel, he says, I will put, not, 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 not I will, get, he says, God, I'm going to put in you a new spirit. He's promised the spirit within us, and he's reassuring us because if we're honest with ourselves, many of us don't live lives with the right spirit. Many of us are fresh functioning in frustration. And we bring, I mean not here, other churches, we bring the wrong spirit 
into God's house. Well, this is not God's house. This is a gymnasium. This is the house of the Lord. Because everywhere you go, you take God with you. I am a tabernacle. That's the other church. That's the church around the corner at the other school. But, but sometimes the people that come to work with the wrong attitude. And the bad thing about it, you know that you're going to bring it before you even go. Oh, I can't wait to get there. I'm going to tell them a few things about themselves. Oh, man, let me make sure that they, because they're going to hear me today. They are going to hear me today. <laughs> they're going to learn today. The wrong attitude. We go into it with the wrong spirit. And watch this. If you don't identify it, you'll cause what's called the domino effect to happen. I love this morning I got a text and there was, a, there was things going on. And, 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 and the person that texted me said, Pastor Larry, I'm, a, I'm struggling right now. I'm struggling right now. And I thank them for the emotions. But God gave us the emotions. We're supposed to feel, but we're supposed to also identify that these feelings are going on. So, that we, so we know what's going on so that we can prepare and not see the domino effect happen in God's house. Ashley coming here with a horrible attitude. She's on the guitar. Ring, 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 ring. I says you. And you can see it all over her face. And she looks out at her husband and goes. Ring, ring, ring. And now Eric has a horrible attitude. And he turns around and he hits one of the twins. Because I don't know which twin that is right now. Uh, <laughs> and now she's upset. And the next thing you know, it goes down the entire aisle. And, and then it goes to the back. And next thing you know, Dan scratches. And says, this is not God's glory. And he turns the chair over. And he runs over and he kicks the keyboard. And all because... We had the wrong attitude. We, we come into God's house grumpy, ill-tempered, sleepy, sneezy, bashful, dopey, and even doc. We bring all these things, the wrong attitude. But God is saying that I'll give you a new heart. The key to this new heart is a heart that's obeying God and his voice in our lives, obeying what God tells us to do and saying, God, I want that old heart out of me. This old heart is a heart that stands in opposition to God and does it very, 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 very arrogantly. Ephesians 2.2 2 says, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world. Watch this, obeying the devil. Who's the devil? He's the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Who wants the spirit? Raise your hand. I'm going to kick you in the face, Jared. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants that spirit. But identifying the fact that, yes, I do sometimes stand opposed to God because it may not be something drastic, but it may be something small. But God's saying, go to your wife and apologize to your wife for what you said yesterday. Go to work and apologize to your boss because he's never mentioned to it. But I come in 10 minutes late every day. And I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. Go to your professor and say, you know, I, 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 was, I was jacked up yesterday, Professor Lee. And I apologize. That's a new spirit. That's a spirit that gives thanks to God and is obedient to what he says. Because in, in Ezekiel, in the same chapter of Ezekiel 36, 27 says, And I will put in them a new spirit in you, watch this, that will follow my decrees. And they will be careful to obey my regulations. That's what a new heart does. It follows the decrees of God and his regulations. And they do it without a frown and without frustration. I'm happy to follow the rules and regulations. And I don't even look at them as rules and regulations. I look at them as standards for my life. And I'm happy to follow those. And I love the fact that I serve a God that if for some reason I get it wrong, he loves me anyway. He may not like what I'm doing. He may not like what I've done, but he loves you. 
And I thank God that that's the God that I serve because of the spirit that he's placed within me. So we have a new song and a new heart, a new spirit. And the fourth thing I want us to drive towards in our 2024 is to look and latch on to this idea of having a new covenant. A new covenant with God. Jeremiah 31, 31 says, the day is coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new, someone say new. I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and Judah. Our God is a covenantal God. He's a God of promises. And he stated that he has made things new and that he's making us a new covenant. You guys know the, the old covenant or the old promises of God were latched onto things. And this new covenant is something not just that was stated in the Old Testament, but remember in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 when Jesus is at the Last Supper, he talks about this new covenant. He says that in verse 25, in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The old covenant was connected with works. Obey me, do this, and I'll bless you. Make this sacrifice, do this, and now you're seen righteous. But the new covenant, the, 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 new, the, new, the new covenant that was brought on from Jesus Christ is a covenant that's based solely and entirely on grace. Trust me and I'll forgive you. Have faith in me and I'll change your life. You don't have to do anything. Grace. You don't deserve it. God gives it to you. You couldn't work for it. That's grace. And it's this concept of grace in this new covenant that God gives, that gives to us. It, it, it brings on the idea that, that no longer are you, are you locked into this thing called legalism. There's a freeness. And people say that, well, you don't really want to preach too much of that, that because if someone feels though that, that there's grace and they don't have to do anything for God's love, then they're not going to fully operate and function in God's love. But it should be the exact opposite. Watch this. I love my wife. I love her from beginning to end. The only thing that I don't do is I don't do feasts. She knows it. My daughters know it. Don't even bring them near me. But I love this woman. So that means that I should go out and cheat on her, abuse her, treat her wrong, because because I because I love her and I know that she loves me. Or should it be the opposite? Because I love her and because she loves me, I should want to be the best for her. Be the best husband that I can be. The, be the best provider that I can be. Be the best example of a man of God to her and to my children. That's what grace is all about. It's not taking advantage of a situation, but it's also saying that I have the liberty to do what God has asked me to do. That's the new covenant. And the last part that I want us to do, and we're ending right here, is I want us to have and latch on to a new name. Someone say new name. Now, now many of us, if, if, if you're from the streets, you know, m many of us have a nickname. Who, who I'm not going to ask you what it is, but who has a nickname? When you, yeah, okay, two right there, three. Yeah, he had a nickname. Was, you know, we, we, we got, you know, Little John, Big John, Middle John, Crazy Luke, Dirty Phil. You know, we got, we got some bad nicknames out there. But, 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 the, but I want you to latch on to the name that God has given you. Revelation 2, 17 says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. I will give him a white stone, and on the stone, watch this, a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. I want you to, if, if, if you've never received Christ today, I want you to Walk boldly into the fact that God is going to give me a new name. And if you've already received him as Lord and Savior, maybe you're not walking underneath the fact of this new name that you've 
received. I, I said last week that, that names mean something. Our, our daughter's names, they mean something. God is my strength. Brielle, Chloe, fertility, blossom. I told you Jessica means rich. That's why I married her. <laughs> names mean something, and God has given you a new name. And I want you to walk in it. I don't want you to, 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 to not walk in what the newness of what God has for you. When we accept and we're cleansed by the blood that was shed by Christ on Calvary, and we say, Christ, I want you into my life as my Lord and Savior, whether you know it or not, you've received a new name. And that name comes with boldness. And that name comes with a purpose. And that name comes with new life. And I want that to be the driving force for us, Life Community Church. Not only the new name that, that we've received, but to be excited about, about sharing Christ with those around us so that they can lay claim to their new life. I love, I love. The, the lives that, that, that Bernard and Mariah are living for their children right now. That Bible study with their kids. Listen, I have the honor of baptism, baptizing Aiden today. But you know who led him to the Lord? His mom and his dad. I want each of us to do the same thing. Somebody that doesn't know Christ. It's great. Yeah, bring them to Life Community Church. But what's even better is for you who have the relationship with them already to talk with them a little bit about Jesus. Don't be phony. Let them see the struggles that you have, but also know that you're locking in to the new name that God has given you. And it's going to be hard. But I want you to know that, that this new name is something that you, that, that you can walk boldly with. There was a time that you thought that you were worthless. But I want you to know that the new name for you that God has given you is a name that you can say that I'm worthy of everything that God is sending my way. You in the past might have thought yourself as being a loser. But I want you to know that God has said that you are a winner. That you are more. Someone say more. That you're more than a conqueror. In the past, you might have been an addict. But God says that you are free and free. And who he has set free has been free indeed. That's the new name that I want you to load on to. Because this world is going to try to hold you back with the old. There's nothing wrong with remembering. I love remembering and having those parties together. But it's the idea of the high five, the new five that I want you to take into 2024, knowing that God is creating in you and made you this new creation. I want you to have a new song to sing about. I want you to have a new heart to love with. I want you to have a new spirit to obey God with. A new covenant to be covered with. But lastly, I want you to lock on to a new name to live by. The new. Be reminded every time you give somebody a high five. I'm striving for these five things in 2024. That's what God wants for you. God wants for us. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you, God. We thank you, God, for the new. God, we thank you that even though we may get it wrong sometimes, God, that, that you are always there with arms wide open to say that I love you. I'm there for you. But God, not everyone truly, truly knows you in that way. If someone's here today or watching on our online campus, for them to get the new song, to have the new spirit, to have the new heart, Lord God, God, they have to be willing to receive that new covenant, to receive that new name, that it starts with the new name. So if there's someone here that's never given their life to Christ, I pray that they walk through what's called the ABCs. Acknowledge, believe, and then confess. Acknowledge that you're a broken person. 
that, that my heart is stony, that I want to do what I want to do, that I'm very much stubborn. Like I always say, we're broken people living in a broken world. But God didn't leave us the way that you be, that you believe, that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to save us, to live a faultless life, born without sin, going to a cross that he didn't deserve, dying, but not just dying, but in three days, rising from the grave and coming back again for his church, believing that, and then see, confessing with your mouth. I can't say it for you. You have to say it for yourselves. So if you've never made that decision, no better time than now, before we walk into 2024. If you're online, if you've never made that decision, I want you to do that right now. Put in the comments, say, Pastor Larry, I've just given my life to Christ because we want to celebrate with you. We would love to send you some literature. We would love to stay connected with you. Now, now, second, there may be some people here that say, I've given my life to Christ. I, I know him as my Lord and Savior, but I'm not walking in my new. And you want today to be the day that you recommit yourself to Christ. I want you to raise your hand where you are, and we're going to pray together, saying, like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And, and God, I, I want you to put me back on track. I, I want to live in the new that you created for me. So if there's anyone here or someone online, I would love to pray with you. you say, I want to re rededicate myself today so that as I walk into 2024, amen, I see that hand. Amen. I see that hand. Thank you, God. I see that hand. I see that hand to do a new thing in your life. And we have to be willing to acknowledge that I'm broken, I'm messed up. I've started down the right path, but I'm not going on that path any longer. I need to lock into that new. Let's pray, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for the new. We thank you that you give it to us, God, and that we are able to receive it. Now, God, for those hands that, that were raised, God, we, I pray that you would redirect their steps, reorder their steps, God. Allow them to live in the newness of life that you've created for them. Allow them to see their purpose, God. Allow them to see more of you and less of themselves. God, allow their days to be days filled with an eagerness to, to know more about you, to read more about you in your word, but to live the life that you've given them to live. Now, God, we pray that you would just watch over those individuals and those that are online that may have said that or wanted that same commitment, God. For those that wanted to make that commitment, to raise their hands that didn't, God, you know. We thank you. Now, God, I pray that you get the glory out of our lives. Take our little and make it much. We thank you and we praise you. And we ask this in the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And the people of God say amen. Hey, thank you so much for watching our sermon. If you were blessed, we pray that you would share this with someone else close to you so they can be blessed as well. And if you want to give, just go to our website and you'll find the location at the very bottom on how you can bless our church. And also, if you're in the area, we would love for you to come visit us in person. So we want you to subscribe. Also follow us on our Instagram and our Facebook pages. You guys have a great week. God bless and hope to see you soon.